Amen. Let's take our Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. We've been preaching through the book of Romans and we'll uh, continue to do so, but today's message kind of fits, I think, rather nicely with Graduate Sunday as we try to honor those that have graduated, but it's not just, you said, well, preach, I've already graduated. Well, this, it's, there's something in Romans chapter 12, uh, verse number 2, that's for you as well. And when I think about those that have graduated, I think about maybe they've just now entered the highway of life. Uh, they've gotten a new lane, amen, and things are going to get a lot faster and a lot more powerful, and there's going to be a lot more temptations and uh, things along the way that they're going to experience. And I'm so glad that God's Word has a word for that. And uh, I'm going to call it three road signs on the highway to heaven, amen. Now this is, um, what we're going to talk about today is not going to make sense to the world. They're not going to understand what we're talking about. Uh, lawyers are not going to get it. Statesmen are not going to get it for the most part. Uh, humanists, philosophers, they're not, philosophers, they're not going to get what we're talking about. And because what we're talking about is, is this, uh, find the will of God, follow the, these are not the three signs, find the will of God, follow the will of God, and finish the will of God. I think that would be a nice parting uh, piece of advice to our graduates who are getting ready to get on this highway. Find the will of God, follow the will of God, and finish the will of God. And so that's, uh, that's where we want to preach along those lines today. But let's look at Romans chapter number 12, and we'll just read the first two verses again this Sunday. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so let's have a quick word of prayer and ask God to help us this morning. Our Father, we thank you for uh, the time that we've been able to have together. Lord, we thank you for health and strength that we have. We thank you for the freedom to gather together. Lord, we thank you most of all for Christ who died on our behalf at Calvary, thus paying once and for all our sin debt. We praise you for that this morning. Thank you for what Jesus did for us at Calvary. Thank you for the shed that was, uh, the blood that was shed. Thank you for the, the death, the burial, and praise God for the resurrection. We're so thankful to be uh, your children this morning. And so, Lord, we come to you now and ask that you would meet with us. Take your word, Father, and really minister to our hearts and help us, Lord, as we're on this highway of life. Help us to see these nice three signs, uh, road signs that you've given to us. I pray that it would be a help and a blessing uh, this morning. I pray for our graduates, Father. Thank you so much for them. I pray that you will lead them, guide them, have your very hand upon them, God, as they go out uh, and start this journey that's known as life. And I pray, God, that they would walk with you all the days uh, of their journey. Help us now, we do pray. Holy Spirit, I cannot do anything, and I rely on you, and I pray that you would do a work among us today. Thank you for the people that are here, and we commit this time to thee. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, uh, there's three signs, three road signs along the road. We don't want anybody in accidents. We don't want people, you know, running off the road. We want to keep on doing what's right, especially for our graduates and especially for all of us. So let's share three road signs uh, on the highway to heaven. Road sign number one is this. Be not conformed to the world. Be not conformed to the world. Verse number two says, and be not conformed to this world. Now, right there, you've got to stop and say, what's he talking about this world? What is the world? Is he talking about the trees and the flowers and, you know, the, the little streams? And what was he talking about the world? Well, may I suggest a couple of meanings to you this morning, but when he says, be not conformed to this world, one of the things he's talking about there is this present age that we live in. Be not conformed to this 
age that lives apart from God, that lives with, it, with no reckoning toward God, that will not be governed by God, that is what he's talking about, this world. Be not conformed to this world that simply lives its life apart from God. And to illustrate that, look at uh, Galatians 1.4. I'll just show you some verses here this morning. Look at Galatians chapter 1 and verse 4. Galatians 1.4, the Bible says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. You can turn over to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 2. The Bible says this, Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And so you, again, you have this, this course of this world, this present evil world. Look over at 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15. The Bible says this in 1 John chapter 2 verse 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And so back in our text in Romans, it says, Be not conformed to this world. and I mean, that's just talking about this system, this age in which we live that is really apart from God, that seeks to live its life without any reservation. I do not want to be governed by God. I'm going to do what I want to do. That's the world in which we live. And it's, it's manifested. I mean, how can you um, describe it? Well, there's all kinds of things. There's, there are many areas today which seek to live totally separate from what God said. Uh, I mean, we could, I could preach here for a while. I'll just preach a couple of them. Number one is manliness. The present age in which we live teaches men to be sissies. It wants to make a man instead of a leader and strong and going forward and leading his family, it wants to make a man very quiet and very sissy and wussified. If you don't believe me, go watch Hollywood. If you don't believe me, turn on the television and go up through the sitcoms. You won't find men anymore. What are you talking about? I'm talking about this world. Don't be conformed to this world. Manliness. I've been reading the old time preachers and they talked about growing up in worthy manhood. I like that phrase. Worthy manhood. How about feminism? This, there's this idea today that teaches that women, they should not want to be in the home. They should not want to take care of a family. That they need to be career driven. That they need to be leaders. That's the course of this world. And probably it's shocking your system right now because you're actually hearing a man say some things that are like, whoa, this is not what I've been told my whole life. Exactly. Exactly. This, what you know is the world. What we know is the world. And you know I'm telling you the truth. The world wants to make the woman strong and carefree and the leader while making the man a sissy and take the back seat and be a loser. And we wonder what's going on in our society. We wonder what the problem is. Why aren't families working right? We wonder why marriages are falling apart. That's why, dear friend, because we're not supposed to be conformed to this world. The man is supposed to be the man. And that doesn't mean like caveman, mm, boo, boo, me Jane, uh, me, me Tarzan, you Jane. That's not being a man, okay? That's not what I'm talking about. Being a man means you're going to lead, you're going to walk with God. You're going to have some wisdom. You're going to have some discernment. Mm, that's a good word. That's really lacking among men. Because they've been sold this lie that you need to be 
really sissy and quiet. I'm just telling you what God's Word says. God, God made a man to be a man, and God made a woman to be a woman. And why can't we just be like, that's okay? The course of this world. I mean, we could, we could just keep on going. You, you see where I'm going? I mean, you can just, you can take it all. You could take the issue of homosexuality, which is an abomination to God. It's sickening to God. It is sickening to God. But the world in which we live tells you that it's an acceptable lifestyle, it, that you will like it. See, we're getting to the place now where they're forcing it upon you and saying you will celebrate it. Some of you were in the military, and you remember when it was you got kicked out of the military for being a sodomite. You can go back 50 years ago and look on the law of, of the land of America and the laws for, for, uh, forbade sodomy. That's called facts, folks. Now, we don't like it, lump it, whatever. That's how it was. But now we live in this world that not only says you that they, it's okay, they force you to like it. They want to, I mean, I know you live on base and they push that stuff. You will like this. This is the world. What are you talking about? Be not conformed to this world. This world ideology that lives separate from God doesn't want to be governed at all by God. I mean, we could go on. There's all kinds of areas. One we could stop and park at a little while is in the church. The philosophy of the world is creeping into the churches. Listen, God set it up for there to be a pastor with qualifications and deacons with qualifications and the group of people meet together that are saved and baptized and serving, the God, uh, serving God together that have their individual gifts functioning as a healthy body. With one man, go out and preach the gospel to everybody. And it says preach. What's going on in churches today, and, I, and it's sad, but a lot of churches have gone the course of this world. They've listened to business leaders. They've listened to the world's philosophy that says, look, if you just stand up there and have somebody to preach, people aren't going to come to that. You need to do more of like light shows. And I mean, you guys are still singing out of hymns? Don't you know that there's all kinds of other music that you could play and draw the crowds? And, and preacher, why? you still get up there in a shirt and tie and don't you know you should have jeans on and a t-shirt and lose the pocket square no that's right Jed. no I like the pocket square what is, I'm just saying this worldliness is really a thing and the Bible says here this is hey this is <laughs> this is what I said earlier people are not going to understand this but this is Bible. This is highway sign number one. <laughs> Be not conformed to this world. That's what it means by the world. But we also would say, listen, this world is run by the devil. This world system that I've just been describing to you, this, that seeks to lower man and wants to elevate the woman and, and make everything uh, not so mm, dogmatic on things, make it just, well, let's just placate to everyone and let's not be real dogmatic on our teaching and let's 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 dumb everything down and and you know God says this but that's not right that world system that I've just been describing to you do you know who's in charge of it it's the devil Satan himself is in charge of it is that in the Bible it absolutely is look at 2 Corinthians 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4 tells us this 2 Corinthians chapter 4 uh, and verse number, well, pick it up in verse number three. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom, watch it now, the God of this what? World hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Listen, the God of this world, little g God, he's not the supreme leader, 
It's a little g God, but let's talk about the devil. You'll remember when Jesus was tempted 40 days in the wilderness and the devil came and tempted him. The devil said, fall down and worship me and I will give you all of these kingdoms. He took Jesus up onto a high place and said, look out through there. Look at all of the kingdom. Look at all the glory of man. I'll give it all to you. The devil said, I will give all of this to you, indicating he has ownership of it. And he does. That's why he's, I mean, the devil's such a loser. All he does, listen, he wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy your marriage. He wants to destroy your family. It's not your brothers and sisters, friend. It's this world, and it's the God of this world who wants to destroy you. That's the, actually the meaning of the word devil. Uh, diabolo. I was telling Brother Chelsea this. That, that word diabolo, in Greek, diabolo. Dia means through like passing through. Bolo means to throw. So the word devil comes from the idea of throwing something through. Imagine a big pane of glass and you take a baseball and you just throw it through. What happens to that glass? Shatters. Destroys it. And that's what the devil wants to do to your life. He wants to destroy. I mean, he's so wicked and vile. Milton, the English poet in Paradise Lost, described the devil after he was cast out of heaven. He's down in hell talking with his, with his demon friends. He says to all of them that he is, his hate is invincible, that he will never do that which is right. He has the courage never to submit or to yield. He said, all is not lost. We will study revenge and our hate is immortal. And he told his friends, better to reign in hell than to serve in heaven. That's how he thinks, ain't it? He would rather reign in hell than serve in heaven. What are you saying? I'm saying he's the God of this world. Be not, road sign number one, be not conformed to this world. And then finally, a third thing would be, world has the idea of appeal to the flesh. Not to the spirit, but to the things of the flesh. Those things that want to elevate you. See, the problem with the honor of the world is that it ascribes glory to men that belong to God alone. It wants to give us the glory that belongs really only to God. That's the trouble with this whole world and this uh, flesh that we live in. Uh, one preacher described it as this when he said, when I look around and I see the kingdoms and I see kings and I see the lordships and I see uh, these rulers, he says, he, th he thinks about this, brain sick beggars who borrow fine clothes, put them on and on stage for one hour pretend and play like they are a king. But then the show's over, and they go back to being nothing but beggars. And really, that's the truth about any one of us who want to exalt ourselves in the world. Because, see, death levels all. The end will come for every single person in here. And it will not matter what you did. It will not matter what your rank was. It will not matter how many zeros you had at your bank accounts. Really, all we are are brain sick beggars playing like we're something special but that hour comes when that's over with the clothes come off and we're back to being beggars so, so, so what's the point be not conformed to this world don't live your life according to this life that is apart from God that's run by the devil that is fueled by a flesh <laughs> Be not conformed. Conformed is, is the word, um, uh, fashioning yourself like the world. Fashioning yourself according to the pattern you see over there, 
You make yourself according to that pattern. The Bible says, listen, be not conformed to this world. I ask you this morning, are you conformed to this world? Is, I mean, you know, does Lady Gaga set your standard or what? <laughs> I hope not. But seriously, that's how people live. And the Bible says when you get on this highway of life, be not conformed to this world. That's sign number one. Sign number two is this, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, that, that, now that's interesting. I really think that's the key to the whole Christian life. That's, that's the key to being victorious in life as a Christian. Because it really deals with the, <laughs> the whole of the man. Look what it says there. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Notice those two words there. One of them is conformed, and the other one is transformed. Conformed, as we were just talking, means to fashion yourself on the outward that you're not on the inward. Conforming means you are one way, but you on the outward appear another way. Let me give you a biblical example of that, and it would be the Lord Jesus Christ. He was God. All-knowing, all-powerful, all places present at the same time, but he fashioned himself like a man. Philippians chapter 2. He fashioned himself in the same word as conformed himself. Here is God who on the outside looks like a man. Transform means be on the outside what you are on the inside. <laughs> Preaching time. Another illustration is Jesus Christ on the transfiguration, Mount Transfiguration. Peter, James, and John saw him outwardly as he really was. And that's how it is for the Christian. Listen, if you're saved, if you're born again, if you have come to the place where you have understood you're, sin you're a sinner and you understand that Jesus died once and for all to pay for your sin debt and you as humble, childlike faith have cried and said, God, would you please save my soul? I know I'm a sinner. I believe you died were buried and rose again. I believe you paid my sin debt. I'm calling on you to save my soul. At that very moment, you believe. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you've done that, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And that's when we come to this next part. Are you conformed or are you transformed? Here's the truth. The Spirit of God lives in you. But if you're conformed, you are saved. You have the righteousness of Christ imputed to your spiritual account. The Holy Spirit of God Almighty indwells you. But if you're conformed, you're living a different way. Your outward is not matching your inward. But the Bible says to be transformed because that would let your outward match your inward. Just like Jesus on transfiguration, same word, transfiguration, transformed. His inward was seen on the outward, and he glowed. Whew. And you know, they got scared to death. See, th this is how we solve problems. People come, I mean, you know, we've been in this for seven years, okay? And we've had a lot of people come, whether it's personal problems, marriage problems, career problems, whatever, you know. Preacher, this just isn't going right for me. How do I solve this? Let's just say marriage. How do I solve our marriage? My marriage is not like I want it to be. How can I solve it? Now, the world will say, okay, let's talk about your marriage and what's your problem. And what Christians say this, you need to read your Bible. You have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The world wants to deal with it differently. It'll, it'll try to pinpoint 
and, it, and it'll go through all of its rigmarole, and it, it'll lean upon all of its uh, pseudoscience and Freudism preaching time right there. But the one who created you, the one who made you, the one who formed you, the one who fearfully and wonderfully made you, when we have problems in our marriage, what do we need to do? We need to go renew our mind. We, we need to get right with God. It's not about how do I fix this, it's I need to fix this. <laughs> One preacher was talking about how do you jump over a hurdle? You're standing right, I mean, it's a, you're a high hurdle. How are you going to jump over that thing? Figure out how to climb over it? You got this problem right in front of you. How are you going to get over it? Well, I got I to gotta measure it out. And I gotta, no, he says the way you get over this hurdle is you actually you turn your back on it and you start walking away from it. And the higher the hurdle, the farther you're going to have to walk. And then you're going to get away from the problem. You're going to get away from the problem and then you're going to run as fast as you can to jump over the problem. And for the believer, when we have problems, we don't need to stand there right at it and try to figure out how to get over it. We need to turn our back on it, walk away from it. And however big problem it is, we need to walk with God further and further and further and go back and go back and go back till we get right with God. Then take a run and start. Amen. You'll jump over that hurdle, no problem. And that's what it means to trans, be transformed. That's road sign number two. Road sign number one, be not conformed. Road sign number two, be ye transformed. And that gives us the third road sign, and it is this. Seek the will of God. Seek the will of God. Look what it says there in our verse there, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now for all you Greek scholars in here this morning, the noun in the nominative case, in verse number 2, which, which tells us what is being focused, what is the subject of that verse. The noun in the nominative case in verse number 2, what is the focus of the verse, is not being not conformed, and it's not being transformed in by the renewing of your mind. The noun in the nominative case, what is being emphasized in this verse, is that little word will the will of God the will of God Whew. <laughs> the word of God is emphasizing follow the will of God the will of God find the will of God follow the will of God finish the will of God I say preacher what's the will of God for my life well, I don't know, but I do know some things that the will of God is for your life. I'll say this, number one, and these are without hesitation. This is, <laughs> this is without uh, any hesitation or any doubt. The will of God for your life, number one, is to get saved. That is the will of God for your life. He does not want you to go to hell. He does not want you to spend eternity in darkness where the, the walls are flames that give no light. He does not want you tormented with the devil and the beast and the false prophet for eternity as thousands of thousands of thousands of years roll on. That's not God's will for your life. God is not willing that any should perish who will have all men to be saved. It is the will of God for you to be saved. And if you're here this morning and not sure about salvation, I beg you, please don't leave this building without knowing 100% sure heaven is your home. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. The Bible says for us, don't be talking about, well, I'll do it later. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, listen, six, uh, a year ago now, would anybody have predicted coronavirus and we would all be wearing masks and this social distancing and all that? Oh, no. The Bible says you don't know what the day is going to bring forth. So I beg you, trust Christ. He died for you. He is the Savior of mankind. He came to seek 
and to save that which is lost. Let me ask you before we move on, are you 100% sure that if you died today, you'd go to heaven? Well, preacher, I'm about 90%. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm about 90, uh, 93, 94, 95. Preacher, I'm about 99% sure I'd go. Then that means you're 100% lost. You've got to trust Christ. God wants you to be saved. That's the will of God for your life. He wants you to get baptized. That's the will of God. After you get saved, you should follow the Lord in baptism. That's, that's the will of God. It will not save you, but you should be baptized by immersion. And I'll just go ahead and say it, in a Baptist church. Amen. We don't have too much time to get into this, but let me just, check what, let me just try to share what I'm talking about. Not all churches are churches. Okay, if you were baptized in a Mormon church, that doesn't count. They're not a church. No, they're the Mormon church. They're a false church. And so, understanding that truth, if the church you were in taught false doctrine, like you could lose your salvation, therefore you've got to live a good life, that's a false church. And if you were baptized in that church, you need to be rebaptized in a under the authority of people who believe and teach this book alone. Amen. And you can call it whatever you want to call it. I, we call ourselves Baptists. They used to call us rebaptizers. Study history, they would say, well, you guys are those rebaptizers. You don't accept infant baptism. No, we don't. It, and that takes me to this. If you were baptized as a baby, that doesn't count. That's not, that's not Bible baptism. Baptism is for believers only. It's for believers only. You get saved and then you get baptized under the authority of a group that are together, that are teaching right. Amen. So you ought to get saved, you ought to get baptized, and then, shall I say it, yes, you ought to join a church. Amen. You ought to join with a group of believers wherever you are. And while you're here in Japan, I've looked and I, I just think this is the best church there is. I'm, I'm, yeah. Let me think. Yeah, this is the one. This is the best church ever, man. You ought to join up and roll up your sleeves because God has you here for a reason. God has you here for this time. God has given each and every single one of us at least one spiritual gift. The Bible says he gives severally as he wills. That kind of indicates that maybe you got more than one spiritual gift. And we all come together as a functioning body to preach the gospel and to encourage one another. You ought to be a part of that. I don't understand why people don't want to be a part of that. I mean, if you don't want to be a part of that, I say, man, there's something wrong with your heart. It's not in line with the scriptures, you know. The Bible teaches that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We're supposed to uh, get saved, get baptized, join a church, and then I always preach these five things. Number one, read your Bible every day. We're talking about the will of God, and we're done. Number one, read your Bible every day. Number two, pray every day. Number three, Attend church every time the doors are open. Well, preacher, I come on Sunday morning. Yeah, you should come back Sunday night. And this, this group, this body of believers, chooses to meet again on Wednesday night. You ought to be here for that. God knew what he was doing when he said, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Other churches choose to meet on Tuesday night. Some churches choose to meet on Thursday night. This church chooses to meet on Wednesday night. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And you ought to come for Sunday school too. Amen. <laughs> Read your Bible, pray, go to church, tithe your income. You ought to be a giver. A tithe means a tenth. So if you make $1,000 from the Air Force, then you ought to give $100 to the Lord, to His work, supporting missionaries. Be a giver. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Who said that? Gandhi? No. Jesus Christ. We'll quote the authority today, amen. 
It's more blessed to give. Take him at his word. You say, well, I just don't know about that. Then put Jesus to the test. Become a giver and then do it for a month. Do it for six months. I'm going to give a six-month trial here. I'm going to be a giver and see how it works. I'm going to try out Jesus and see if he's right. And then come tell me how you fare after six months of being a faithful giver. Read your Bible. Pray. Go to church. Tithe your income. And then finally, be a witness. Tell people about Jesus. The ones that are in your office place, the ones you live next to, the ones in your tower, invite them to Christ. Invite them to church. Be a witness. You do those five things, I'm just telling you, that's the will of God. Now, I don't know, maybe God will call you to foreign service. Maybe God wants you to be a Christian school teacher. Maybe God wants, I don't know what God wants you to do. I don't know, I don't know. But I do know the Bible teaches that we are to seek out the will of God. That is the emphasis in Romans chapter 12, verse number 2, that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Find the will of God, follow the will of God, finish the will of God. Those are the three road signs. Amen. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind and then seek the will of God. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for your word. And Lord, how it is so counter to what we're indoctrinated with today from the world. And Lord, you call on us and instruct us and teach us that this world is on its way to hell that it lives apart from you, that it's fleshly, and in fact, is run by the very devil himself. And God, I pray that you would help us never to conform, to fashion ourselves to this whole world. But Father, that we may be transformed, that we may be on the outside what you've made us to be on the inside. Lord, help us to seek your will putting emphasis upon what you would have for our lives. Help us to do those things, Father. Please bless now our invitation. And Lord, I'm asking you if there was somebody here today that's not sure, if they're not 100% sure about salvation, Father, I pray that you might deal with their heart. Lord, help them to see their need. And help them to see your great love and your great provision for their need. And Lord, I pray that they would call upon you today to be their Savior. Please bless our invitation in Jesus' name. Amen.